In our previous video, we dived into React Server Components, which introduced a dual component model differentiating between server components and client components. In this video, we will put theory into practice by creating both types of components in an XJS application. For this section on rendering, I have created a new Next.js project using the command npx create next app at latest, followed by the project name, which is rendering hyphen demo. Once the command is executed, you should have a project similar to mine. Now, diving into the RSC architecture and its integration with Next.js, it is important to note that by default, every component in a Next.js app is considered a server component. This includes the root layout and the root page that come out of the box with a new Next.js project. Let's create a new component to verify this. Suppose we want to add a new about page to our application. We would create a new file called page.tsx within the about folder within the app folder. Let's populate it with a basic React component. I will use the Pieces Explorer extension for the code snippet. We're going to insert a Next.js page component. Export default function page. Let's call this about page and return an h1 tag that says about page. Just by doing this, you have created a server component. Let's add a log statement to verify this. Console.log about server component. If we head to the browser and navigate to localhost 3000 slash about, we don't see any log message in the browser console. Instead, we see the message in the terminal where we are running our application. It is clear our component is a server component. This component runs on the server bringing along all the benefits of server components such as zero bundle size, access to server-side resources, enhanced security, better SEO, etc. But server components have their limitations. They can't interact directly with browser APIs or handle user interactivity. If we try to incorporate some state into our about page using use state, for example, name, set name, with a default value of an empty string while making sure we import use state at the top. Head back to the browser. You will see an error. This is because use state expects a client component environment, but our about page is a server component. If you think about it, server components cannot use state because they are rendered on the server where there is no concept of state as it exists in the browser. This again confirms the fact that every component created in Next.js is a server component unless specified otherwise. Let's leave the about page as a functioning server component and learn how to create a new client component. We'll make use of a new file. So within the app folder, dashboard slash page.tsx and export a simple component that uses state to manage a user's name. Once again, from Pieces Explorer, I'm going to insert an XJS page component, change the name to dashboard page, import use state, create a state variable called name with an initial value of empty string. And for the JSX, we add an input element whose value is equal to the name state variable and on change, we call set name passing in the input value. We then have a paragraph element that renders hello followed by the name. Now at the top of this file, we must include a directive or to put it simply, a special instruction within the code. Within double quotes, use client. This directive acts as our ticket to cross the boundary from server to client side and is what allows us to define client components. It signals to Next.js that this component, dashboard page, along with any components it imports, is intended for client-side execution. As a result, 
the component gains full access to browser APIs and the ability to handle interactivity. If we return to the browser and navigate to slash dashboard, we see the component with its state working as expected. We do have the text, but the styling is not appropriate. Let's now shift our attention to a very important point about client components rendering behavior. Let's add a log statement within the dashboard component. Dashboard client component. In the home page, let's add a link to navigate to the dashboard page. So at the top, import link from next slash link. And after the paragraph tag, I'm going to add the link component. The text is dashboard and href is equal to slash dashboard. Back in the browser, if we navigate to localhost 3000, we should see the dashboard link. Click on the link and we see the log message in the browser's console. We have it twice because of React's strict mode. If we go back to the terminal, you can see there is no log message about the dashboard component rendering. However, if you were to reload the dashboard route, you can see we have the message in the browser's console again, but if we head back to the terminal, we see the same message here as well. As I mentioned in the previous video, client components are primarily executed in the client and have access to browser APIs, but they are also pre-rendered once on the server to allow the user to immediately see the page's HTML content rather than a blank screen. It is an optimization strategy that Next.js implements and is recommended by React. The name client component is indeed confusing as a client component executes once on the server, but I'm confident it will not get in your way of learning React server components. A very important point to keep in mind. To summarize, in the React server component architecture and by extension in the Next.js app router, components are server components by default. To use client components, you must include the use client directive at the top. Server components are rendered only on the server, whereas client components are rendered once on the server and then on the client. Now that we understand how to define both server and client components in Next.js, in the next video, let's dive into the rendering life cycle of server and client components in Next.js. If you're enjoying the content, please hit the like button subscribe and turn on notifications to stay updated. I'll see you in the next video.